Big headlines coming out of Big Sky Country this morning. A lot. Montana becoming the first state to ban people dressed in drag from reading books to children in public schools and libraries. Plus, the Montana governor signing a bill defining the word sex in state law as only male or female, joining the states Tennessee and Kansas. For more on this, let's welcome in Montana Attorney General Austin Knutson. Sir, welcome back. Um, there's also a law that has to do with TikTok, right. and we want to get to that too. But first, let's start with the ban on drag queen story hour. Again, your state, the first in the nation to, to take this on. Critics call it an attack on free speech. Why is this a priority for the state of Montana? Well, I don't think anyone should be surprised by this, Sean and Emma. Thanks for having me back. Look, Montana's, there's a handful of things Montanans take very seriously, and one of them is our children. Montana's a very libertarian state. We've got a very libertarian streak, and I don't think anybody in Montana cares. If you want to be a six foot five dude and dress up in drag and go to a private venue, nobody cares. Knock yourself out. The problem we've got is when you want to use taxpayer dollars, you want to go to a public venue and a public school or a public library and perform in front of children. That raises a lot of questions. That raises questions certainly to me as a parent, but I think there's, there's just a fundamental question here. Should we be using public funds and public facilities for you to perform in front of children? And that's what this is all about. All right, so there's that, because we've got three more to work through. The next one here, Montana only recognizing male or female in state law uh, in terms of sex. LGBTQ advocates argue the legislation denies legal recognition to non-binary and transgender people. Um, talk to us about that, perhaps um, maybe some uh, criticism of this in support of it. Well, look, I'm going to give you guys a boring, really practical, logistical answer for this. As the attorney general and the guy in charge of the State Department of Justice, I'm in charge of all the criminal, criminal justice data. And we have a tremendous amount of criminal justice data. We also are, are in charge of the motor vehicle division and driver's licensing. Just from a criminal justice data standpoint, we have to be able to have solid data on whether you're a male or a female for criminal records. When, when, when someone's pulled over, if there is an arrest, we have to be able to pull that criminal record. If you're someone who has decided halfway through your life to, you know, quote unquote, change your gender, that creates all kinds of havoc for criminal justice data that has to be able to follow that individual. And if you're if you're changing or if that's changed, that becomes very problematic for our for our criminal justice data. So that's a boring answer, but that's a really truly logistical problem for us here at the Department of Justice. And that's why we are actually Actually, we're, sure. we're very supportive of this legislation. Okay, so you mentioned the, dr the driver's license aspect of it, keeping track of data points. I was also wondering how, if at all, this might play into uh, other hot topics when it comes to transgender athletes participating in women's sports. Would that all uh, be impacted by this sort of sex-based uh, clarification law, if you will? I'm not sure where the overlap is. I mean, like, like I said, for, for our part here in state government, this really was a, just a practical answer because I mean, we've, we've had several instances here in the state now where, where non-binary individuals are, are petitioning and, in fact, have even sued demanding that their driver's license say that they are non-binary. Well, I'm sorry, but under our state law, that's just not even an option. I mean, we literally are, are, are a one or the other state. Uh, and, and that's that's just where this came down. Yeah. All right. Let's move on if we can. Uh, TikTok, uh, the first state in the nation to ban TikTok again for individual users. Then you have this TikTok striking back against your ban on the popular video app. Uh, on Monday, TikTok filed legally to challenge the ban in U.S. District Court. TikTok arguing this. The ban violates First Amendment rights of the company and the users. Um, your reaction here, and do you have a strong case to, to push back against TikTok pushing back? We do think we have a strong case. We, we would not have brought this legislation if we didn't think we could defend it. And, and I'll, I'll be right up front. This was our legislation. My office pushed this. We drafted this uh, and we wrote it this way. I guess I would question about whether how much First Amendment rights we want to grant to a Chinese company. And that's really what this is about. This is about the, the Chinese Communist Party using an application to spy on Montanans and spy on all Americans. But, you know, unfortunately, the federal Congress has not stepped up and done their job here. They're good at holding hearings. 
They're good at making a spectacle, but we haven't seen any rubber actually meet the road. And we, so that's why that's why Montana stepped up sure. here. Yeah, I, I was going to say, wasn't it the federal government yeah. employees who weren't allowed to have it on your phone, right. but then everyone else, I guess, could have it on their personal devices? And now clearly Montana's uh, taking a step forward and saying, no, 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 we're not going to allow downloads starting next year. TikTok challenging it, and we'll keep our viewers posted with what happens next. Just wanted to get your final thoughts on this. Again, back to a bill that was signed recently by the state's governor, uh, banning sex reassignment surgery for minors within the state. Uh, that's also been met with backlash. Of course, we've seen other states push forward with this sort of legislation that would prevent these hormone therapies or, or gender transition surgeries here. What are you expecting in regards to potential legal challenges uh, in, in response to this law? We're, we're absolutely expecting challenges. In fact, I'm not so sure we don't already have one coming or maybe even filed. Uh, this, this is becoming a hotter topic around, around the country and certainly here in Montana. We saw a number of protests and a, a number of uh, dust-ups at the state capitol during the legislature when, when this bill was moving. Um, look, I think this comes down to, to me, it's very similar to, the, to the, the drag show ban. We're very protective of our children in this, in this state. And when you've got schools and school administrations and doctors who are now saying, we don't need the parents' consent to start transitioning children, that's a problem. That's a problem for parents like me. That's a problem for all parents in Montana. Uh, there's a real question about whether this is actually necessary surgery, whether this is necessary treatment. There's a lot of conflicting data out there, even in the clinical journals, about the long-term effects of this and whether this is actually beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of interesting data out there coming out of Europe. Um, so I, I think this is going to be, be a hot issue, but that this is one that we're going to defend very strongly here at the Montana Department of Justice. It's late, it's full. Montana's uh, got a lot going on there. I wonder if other states will follow suit. A uh, lot to take on. We appreciate your time. That is Montana Attorney General Austin Knudsen. Thank you, sir. You bet. Thanks for having me. Yeah.